So today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about studio monitors and do you really need to have them in your studio to get great sounding productions? I'm also gonna talk about mixing on home stereo speakers. And I'm also gonna address Tom Zai, who actually called me out online um, in a totally nice way. He didn't like, you know, attack me, but um, basically saying that it was a lie that you had to have them to get professional sounding results in your studio. So we're gonna discuss all those things today here on GarageBand and Beyond. So quickly, let's let's address Tom Zai's video where he was, uh, you know, like I said, saying I was a liar. The title of this video is The Lie About Studio Monitors. And the reason I'm doing a video on this is I was searching YouTube and something came up in the title about, do you even need a pair of studio monitors? And the take home message of that video was that, yes, you absolutely need a pair of studio designed speakers in order to work well and mix well and hear things properly and do things the correct way in the studio. There may be some truth to that statement, but for the most part, I really don't agree with a lot of what was in that video. Nicely, I, again, not a personal attack, but just saying that it was a lie. Like you could, you know, that you could get good sounding music at home mixing on headphones and stereo speakers. So here's my answer to that. Can you do it? Yeah, of course you can do it. Will your results be great? Will they be perfect? And will they translate across all sources? N unlikely, very, very unlikely. There are a few things that you all know at this point. If you've watched my channel, we've talked about this stuff before. Consumer level speakers have pushed up low end, pushed up high end, whatever that particular company thinks sounds good. That is the EQ curve that they're gonna put on their speakers, okay? So yeah, you could sit there and really try to learn the way music sounds on those speakers, but here's the problem with that. When you go to record, right? Because this isn't only about mixing. This is also about recording, about making sure that the musician and the instrument is in the right location in the room, making sure that the microphone is on the right location of the guitar or whatever it is that you're recording. If you are trying to critically listen for like mic positioning or positioning the instrument in the room, good luck doing that on consumer level speakers they are not gonna translate a neutral sound. And that is why I recommend that you get studio monitors to mix and to record with. And that's really important to remember. This isn't only about mixing, this is about recording and how those monitors come into play during the recording process. Short answer is no, I don't really recommend it that you work on headphones or stereo speakers, but if that's all you have, then do it. That's fine, I have done it. When I was living in Italy and just getting started on GarageBand, I was totally just taking the headphone output of my laptop and going into my home stereo. And sure, I got some decent sounding stuff, but when I would take it to recording studios and listen to those demos, I would instantly hear like, too much compression, not enough high end, way too much low end. Um, but that's all because I was, you know, mixing on little Sony speakers. My favorite home recording studio monitors, especially for people that are not working in spaces that have been treated, right, for acoustics. Um, my space here, like you see these panels all around me, those are panels that are designed specifically for mixing purposes. And I use, you know, this space for tracking as well. My favorite monitors for anybody out there who's working in a room that is untreated acoustically are the IK Multimedia, the iLoud Micro Monitors, or the MTM iLoud Monitors, okay? So the reason that I like them so much is not only are they affordable, not only are they really nice sounding, but because of the form factor, the smallness, especially on the iLoud Micro Monitors, they don't move a lot of air. Okay, so that means that the room isn't such a big part of that equation of what you're listening back to, right? If you have big monitors in an untreated space, a lot of what you're hearing is this space, okay? So my space has been treated. I have multiple bass traps. I have panels all over here for high end, the mids, the lows, everything here is done in a very specific way. Like I said before, for mixing. 
But if you aren't in a space with none of these panels or no foam or anything, and by the way, foam only does high end, does not do low end. Low end is by far the most important thing that you should be working against with your acoustic baffling. Bass traps are a must have in any good home recording studio. If you use those small iLoud monitors, the room doesn't get sent back to your ears as much because they're so small and they're interacting with the room a lot, lot less. Same thing goes with those IK Multimedia MTMs, which I have now and I have replaced my iLouds with, although I still do use my iLouds for a mobile recording setup that I have. Um, they're great. The, the micro monitors are really great. And this is not a paid anything from IK Multimedia. I just really, really like the monitors that they make. Affordable, good quality, and good sounding, and you guys can get some really great results out of those monitors. But anyway, the whole point of what I'm trying to say is, you know, again, going back to Tom Zai, you know, he used the uh, NS10s, I think it was the Yamaha NS10s as an example. Like, you know, people in the 70s figured out that, you know, these home stereo speakers were really good for mixing, um, but that they didn't start using them because they were so good sounding. They started using them because they realized how much of the mistakes in their mixes were translated into the NS10s by Yamaha, right? Those white speakers. Those speakers let you really hear what's wrong with your mixes. And somebody just, you know, somebody in the 70s was like, holy, you know, moly, I, I can hear something that's wrong with my mix on your home stereo. So then they probably brought those speakers in. We're like, we need to use these. And then it caught on. But it wasn't because they're great sounding speakers at all. In fact, as far as compared to like consumer level speakers, they're not good sounding speakers. They are kind of mid heavy. They're very boxy sounding, but they're very, 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 very honest and true. That's why I have the Avantone Mix Cubes for that same reason. They're not great sounding monitors, but they do tell you a lot of very important information about your mixes. And that is something that is inherently unique to both the NS10s and the Avantone Mix Cubes, okay? So they might not be great sounding, but they are very, very important. They are totally like microscopes for your mixes. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to like look through a microscope all the time, but when you need to see the little details, you need a microscope. That's what NS10s or the Mix Cubes do. So on the other side, Say you want to get those big eight inch monitors or big six inch monitors, whatever it may be that you have available to you. Remember, unless your room is properly treated, those monitors are going to do a lot more negative for your mixes than positives because of what I'm talking about here, the way the room interacts with your ears. When you're moving a lot of air with eight inch speakers, you are moving all of the air in the room, all of the bass is bouncing around the room, all the high end is bouncing around the room. And unless you have it properly treated, you will be hearing those. So just remember, if you're going to get big monitors, you, it's really, really, really important that you get bass traps and then you get some panels up because otherwise you're going to be hearing the room. So here at the end, let me say again, yes, you can record on home stereo speakers. Do I recommend it? No, um, it's just not going to be, it's not ideal. You want neutral sounding monitors so that when you are doing things like placing the microphone on the guitar or moving the instrument around in the room, or, you know, even testing vocal mics out for a singer, um, you cannot rely on a consumer level monitor because that has EQs in it already. So you're not getting an honest representation of what you're listening to as far as like vocal takes or, or vocal microphones or microphone positioning, all that kind of stuff. It, it, it's just not going to work that way. You won't hear it properly. You're going to hear it with an EQ on it. And, um, right. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you haven't been able to tell my voice is still thoroughly blown out. That's why I didn't do my music Monday video for any of you who are curious. Um, I've been having this voice problem. I don't know what's going on. I can't really speak nor can I sing very well. So, um, I mean, it's Thursday now and I still can't sing or speak very clearly. So, Oh, I hope that I'm better by Monday, you guys. Tom Zai, uh, I hope that this clears up this debate. I was not lying. I'm giving you my professional opinion on, you know, speakers here. And, uh, you know, I mix a lot. I have been doing this for over 30 years of my life. Um, I am 44, by the way, and I've been in studio since I was 14. So, um, yeah, I've been doing this for a very long time. And go to a professional recording studio 
and see if they're using speakers from a consumer level stereo anywhere in their studio for referencing it's pretty unlikely i i mean maybe once in a while i'll see it but very rarely do i see consumer level speakers um in a studio and I, there's a really good reason for that and uh, that's because of everything i just said all right you guys uh, that's about all my voice can handle for today i hope you have an awesome weekend and um i will promise to try to make another video for this weekend um all depends on the voice all right you guys have a great day peace and love <laughs>